Hello people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to yet another Game Theory reaction video. MadPad has just uploaded Game Theory, FNAF The Grave Robber. I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say that this video is going to be about the newly released Fazbear Freight book number 2, Fetch. Hopefully he doesn't spoil too much about the Fetch book because as you can see from the bookmark in it, I have not finished reading the book, so hopefully not too many spoilers. I'm also currently working on the summary slash review for Into the Pit, so if you want to see that, and you and it turns out you're not subscribed, hey, punch that subscribe button. Also, while I am desperately asking for, for you to do stuff for me, um, don't forget that we have the charity stream on April 7th for Hope From Home for the United Way Foundation. The top donator from that stream will win this FNAF poster. Got the whole gang on it, it is an official merchandise from the series, so if you want to win that, tune in to the charity stream on April 7th, 1pm Eastern Standard Time. So that is enough self-promotion out of the way, let's finally jump into the reaction for Game Theory FNAF The Grave Robber. Here we go! Game Series. Book Series. Turn up a little bit. Wanted. New book series. Nice oh, 75. Come on. Fine. Phone guy. Phone Playing dude. Uno with Purple Scott? Guy. Orange dude. D didn't you just. Uh, fine. Wild card. Change the category. Timeline. Fight of 87. Chomp of 83. What's going Fight on here? 85. Wait, but. Time traveling ball pit. You can't just. Reverse. Oh, yeah. Damn, reverse. Scott's great at Uno. Reverse. 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 reverse, 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 reverse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no clue what that was. Hello, game Internet. Theory. Welcome to Game Theory. Another day, another installment in the oh. FNAF multimedia conglomerate. Oh. So at this point, some people in the FNAF community really hate my guts. Like, ring me through a what? meat grinder and feed me to a rabid dog animatronic levels of hate. Like, for instance, that is pretty extreme hate. And I'll read it exactly as written to stay true to his authorial intent. Oh god, Quote, your grandma he's a sucks. a hard-care FNAF fan. He's an embracement to FNAF tourists. He insists on using the box to prove the box. <laughs> Thories, and they don't even make sense. He sooks and thinks he's smart, but he's not. I wish he would stoop. <laughs> he then goes on to rant for yeah. a paragraph about yeah. how unrealistic time travel is. That sounds like a YouTube comment. About rabbits haunted by ghost metal, but I think you get the point. And though I use this one really over the top extreme comment as an example, seeing stuff like this is a bummer. Cause mm -hmm. I don't know if you can tell, but I really do like this franchise. Hey, that doesn't look I like an official Bonnie model. Just connecting ideas, just or presenting new things threads to consider in a franchise that at this point is massive and really really confusing it is but his very confusing does that also doesn't look like an official endo model top of this episode sorry it'll be relevant nitpicking people hate when i do that the, um, how did he put it the box to proof my theories here's the thing friends i think this is something that both sides could use as a reminder both my fnaf theory followers and my fnaf theory haters there is a difference between canonicity and continuity and i think a lot of the times in these sorts of discussions they get confused with each other something being listed as canon just we talking about the canon of the books? It is blessed by the person who is overseeing the rules of the universe. It is self-consistent within the boundaries of that fictional world. On the other hand, a continuity, at least as I'm referring to it here, is a timeline of events. A oh continuous boy, story line. thread where one event leads to the next that leads to the next. Take Star Wars as an example. Rey having magic right. healing powers in Rise of Skywalker? Or Leia flying around I don't know like anything about Star Wars, Wars so I can't because connect with this, but... Works of the franchise, those powers thereby get the green light as being canonical powers of the Force in the overall Star Wars universe. The problems people have Didn't with them, though, is that they don't fit in cleanly with the continuity that was previously established. If hmm. Force healing is in fact a thing, then why hasn't it been used to save literally anyone before this point in the series? Tell you what, it would have been really handy oh. for old Qui-Gon Jinn over there in Episode 1, but the fact remains, healing is now a canonical Force power, which means that the canonicity of certain powers is presenting challenges to the established continuity of events that came before. Hmm. Now, this is where FNAF comes in. You see, you can have multiple continuities all existing under the same canon. And it appears as though this is how the FNAF franchise is So you're going to go to the Scott's Steam and the original message games exist in an alternate universe about the canon one another. of another. They are separate continuities, and yet they are all deemed canon. This was all expressly stated by Scott years ago. Quote, yeah, so yes, the book is canon, just as the games are. That doesn't mean that they are intended to fit together like two puzzle pieces. The book is a reimagining of the Five Nights at Freddy's 
gritty story. And mm. if you go into it with that mindset, I think you'll really enjoy it. End quote. Now, what I've been trying to do with my theories and what I think some hey, people I was in that besides one. misunderstand is that I was in the Code of Glitch Shop one. Use the books Yay, me. to solve a continuity. I'm trying to use the books to establish a canon oh, that will boy. then allow us to Jeff. solve a continuity. Still not looking the too good. present us with themes, concepts, characters, and motivations in one continuity that can then inform our understanding of a I like that he's reminding people or about at this. at the very least, give us questions that we can ask of that continuity. Charlie being a robot in the books tells us that in the canon of the Five Nights world, passable humanoid robots can actually be a thing. So are there any characters in the games who this may or may not apply to? Maybe? I don't know, but it's a question that we owe it to ourselves to ask because it's like in one of his past theories, he thought that, uh, Do we know what these little pins are victim in design here in the was game? A robot. No, no idea. In fact, most people probably well, didn't even remember that they robot, in the sorry. first place. But in the books, they play an important role. These are the things that allow Baby to transform into a human disguise. Now, is so that creepy. necessarily what they're doing in the game? No, definitely Maybe? not. Is the best and likely only clue for what they really are coming from a separate continuity? Yeah. yeah in this case, yes it is. This isn't us trying to shove hmm. puzzle pieces together like Scott warned us against. It's about seeing that in one puzzle, there's a piece that fits in a certain location. And in a separate puzzle, we have a similar piece that might end up acting Big in a brain. similar way. And here's the thing. You don't have to take my word on any of this anymore. Scott recently made a new post about all of this oh, to clarify right. the situation. In response to the question of whether the I lore about this post. is solvable, he said this. All I can do is say that some questions will be answered, even if it may not always be the answer you wanted. Be patient. Let me at least say this. Future games will look forward, but look to the novels to fill in some of the blanks to the past. I so love there that. you have it. From the creator himself. Does including Scott. the books in our discussions make things messy and complicated? Sure. But yeah. remember what franchise we're talking about here, friends. Messy Come and here. complicated is like the formal first name that Five Nights at Freddy's never uses. Call it McFnaf. Messy complicated Five Nights at Freddy's. The long and short of it is True. that when it comes to this franchise, we as theorists have always had to be discerning over what clues are helpful and which ones are just red herrings. Phone guy? This oh god, no not the phone now. guy when theory. When we only had the games, we did it with the number of foxy toes and Freddy buttons. Oh, did a missing button mean it was a new animatronic? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Now, we just have to do it with time traveling ball pits and sound illusion discs. And here's Good. the last thing I'm gonna say on the issue, One. and hopefully it's the last time that I have to talk about it. At this point, where there's soon to be more books than there are games in this franchise. Wait, take a minute what? To I did not that. realize to that. To dismiss the books entirely at this point. Oh my god, he's including FNAF World as well in that. Because we're referenced in the new book, Fetch. Yeah, seriously, we're in it. From page, well, um, I read it on digital, so it's like page 250 out of 3,127. Quote, Greg did tune back in, though, when Kimberly Bergstrom raised her hand. Well, he sort of tuned back in. He heard her question, is this just a theory? <laughs> Oh my god. I probably didn't actually say it that way. That was just my creative interpretation. Game of that line. Theory. Look, Mom, yeah, no, that, that's it. Joke hidden inside the second installment of a multi volume scholastic book series. You truly Maybe. made it. Anyway, <laughs> meta discussion over. Let's talk about this new book and what it means for the franchise. So, quickly before he goes into that, normally I would, because this is going on for six minutes, 44 seconds, normally in my past reactions, I would be just like, oh man, he took nearly seven minutes to remind people about this. But I think this was necessary because. Especially with Bad Pat's new series on talking about the books and how they are linking to the game, sort of, and filling in those blanks. I think this was very necessary because some people are just completely, m like, misremembering what Scott said and just connecting the books in every way possible. I think this really, this reminder was really needed. So, normally I would harp on the fact that that took seven minutes, but for now, I'll let it slide shall we? Fazbear Frights number two Fetch Aye. was recently released Aye. and it is, um, well, if I'm being honest, it feels much less connected to the series than the first one. Don't get me wrong, really? the stories are still really Again, good, I haven't finished the book. even darker than the original three. I mean, one has oh, a no. young girl outright being mauled to death and wrapped in a sheet while she lays there dying, so pretty intense stuff. But <sighs> the connections to the main lore are definitely a bit shakier this time around. I mean, really? the first book, Into the Pit, featured cameo performances by Aye. Golden Bonnie. Baby, Funtime Freddy, The Missing Children's Choir, and more. This one, meanwhile, Great. introduces us to a lot of new things. A smartphone-powered animatronic dog oh, named that Fetch. Cute. Tiny, free-roaming versions of Freddy Fazbear Lonely called Freddy. Lonely Freddy's. We do get some quality time with Plush Trap, but, you know, it's Plush Trap. Plush like trap. the D-Stringer and the FNAF Cannon alongside the Bitty Babs and the Endoskeleton 2. Is, is that a hot take? D did I just offend the Plush Trap stands? I, I mean, like Plush Trap. squeaked into Ultimate Custom Night as is. I'm, I'm just saying.
saying here, guys. Anyway, let's. I'll, I'll admit, I like plus trap. He's cute. And what they mean for the franchise, shall we? Story number one: Fetch. Greg and his two friends, Haiti, Hattie. Katie? And Cyril live near Olympia, Washington. Greg feels compelled to explore an old abandoned Freddy's Not really near Utah. He discovers Fetch, a fearsome animatronic dog with sharp teeth and an even sharper understanding of texting lingo. Quote, how long has this place been empty? Greg asks. Fetch looks like he's older than my dad, but smartphones haven't been around that long. End quote. After getting <laughs> scared out of the pizzeria, the dog Time goes travel? on to fetch whatever Greg wants with increasingly disastrous results. Killing a dog, ripping oh. his uncle's finger off, and eventually Eventually retrieving a school crush in the worst way possible. Oh. It's actually a pretty simple story, but there are two big things to call out about it. First, it continues a theme that we're starting to see develop Fetching. in these books. Kids Sorry. are being drawn to these restaurants. It's never explained in the story, but Greg feels compelled to go to Freddy's by some unseen force. Quote from the book, this might be what he'd felt in the field, what had called him here. And again, a bit later in that chapter, Greg was afraid he might not have gotten what he was there for, had he done what he was meant to do, end quote. Greg is now the second character to have some sort of psychic connection to these restaurants. Oh. As I talked about in our last theory, Oswald from Into the Pit had the exact same Old thing, Oswald. where he inexplicably found himself drawing horrific animatronic monsters without ever knowing about Freddy's to begin with. It's also worth noting that both are the first stories in their respective books. It'll be interesting hmm. to see whether this trend holds in installments. The second important part Coming of the story, next. though, is that it clearly establishes Freddy's as a place where technology is advanced far Far beyond where the rest of society is. As I read really? in that earlier quote, Fetch can connect to smart devices like cell phones despite being older than the kids' parents. The reason I call this out is that in theory crafting for this franchise, I've seen a lot of theorists use the more modern, sleeker designs of the Funtime animatronics to put them later in timelines. But it seems like this story is telling us that those sorts of details don't matter. Freddy's is and will always be fantastically ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. I mean, it did have free roaming animatronics there's a bit more in that story about random like the event 80s, generators so. and plants slash machines being able to read our minds and summoning stuff to you via mental focus but i can't quite think of how it's important to any of the actual overarching narratives for the franchise so maybe it's a discussion for a mini theory at some point down the line but for now i'm just gonna skip it story number two we'll come back to in a minute as that one has the most to discuss story Only number 30. three out of stock a new plush trap toy the plush trap chaser a light activated oh, that just chomping green doesn't rabbit sound right all the rage, selling out at stores across the nation. It also retails for $79.99. So Scott be making those fat stacks both IRL oh, and in the book world for his killer merch. A boy named Oscar, fed up with never getting what he wants, shoplifts the last one. One uh -oh. that someone had supposedly returned for being defective. Quote, um, is it just me or do the teeth look wrong? Isaac pointed at the straight, slightly yellow, human-looking teeth that were visible through Plush Trap's partly opened mouth. And what's with the eyes? He reached out and poked one of the cloudy green eyes. Ew. He whipped his hand back and flicked his finger. It's squishy. End uh -huh. quote. After a few days of it doing nothing, the plush trap suddenly activates and terrorizes Oscar and his friends, chomping I'm through the house's <laughs> doors and garages just trying to Here's bite them. Plushy. Their only protection is that plush trap freezes in the light. Quote again, he was turning the box over and over in his hands, and there in bold letters was a critical detail. Walks in the dark, freezes in the light. Flashlight freeze! A few hours and a Foxy from Joy Creation. flashlights later, the boys destroy the monster at last by luring it in front of an oncoming train. A few Interesting. things to call out here in this story. First and most obviously, it explains Plush Trap's behavior in FNAF 4. He really is just a haunted toy that goes on a rampage and is stopped by the power of flashlights. So it's cool to make that lore connection with mm, Plush Trap's I original thought about that. We also know, based on the story, that Plush Trap apparently has the ability to mimic voices. He has a speaker system built in under his fur and is able to mimic the voices of Oscar's mother and friends. Now, this is a really interesting detail because up until this point, the only voice mimics in the franchise have been the fun time animatronics, with their built-in systems intended to lure children away from their parents <laughs> So that they be grabbed. This suggests the possibility that Plush Trap was either a prototype for those larger models testing out the voice mimicry software or was himself a Funtime era animatronic. Whereas up really until this fit point, in, though. Plus theorists have classified him alongside the other nightmares from FNAF 4. But the last and most important thing to call out, though, is the fusion of human parts and animatronic parts. The story makes it very clear yeah. that the plush trap no. runs away with has both human eyes and teeth. 
quote from the book. Mm -hmm. Raj turned to Oscar. You managed to steal us the only plush trap chaser that looks like a half human hybrid. End quote. Now, this mm, idea want one of, those of a half toys. robot, half human animatronic is a completely new concept for this series. But is it? You see, in FNAF 4, we had ourselves Nightmare. The black, transparent, he has a bear brain. That, if you looked closely enough, had a human brain in its head. He's got a, a part of big brain. Design, a detail that pretty much all of us dismissed. I mean, all of us glossed over Nightmare in general is just like the embodiment of death. The yeah, grim Nightmare's grim just a weird guy. Slowly flatlines in his hospital bed, or, you know, just a figment of the boy's haunted imagination. But with this context, kind of forget about Nightmare. Life, could Not gonna Nightmare lie. have actually been a real experiment? Was William Afton in his oh, quest for immortality, or Henry in his quest for more lifelike robots, testing the human brain's ability to survive in and operate an animatronic body? This would hmm. make Nightmare the literal Frankenstein's monster for He's family like Dreadbear. Even though Except, I say that jokingly, it's actually. also something that appears in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC hey! from FNAF Help Wanted, where we actively program a brain and insert it into Dreadbear's head before Hand Unit tells right. us this. Well done. It's time to introduce the creature to the kids for focus testing and troubleshooting. We know, based on the original trilogy of books, that, that Afton was obsessed with recreating living metal just like those original haunted animatronics. Oh. I see Nightmare, Dreadbear, and this plush trap all as potential experiments looking to do exactly that. Lastly, hmm. we come to story number two, Lonely Freddy. It's my personal favorite. Lastly, story In this number one, two out of three. rebellious teen Alec looking to expose his goody two-shoe sister Hazel for the fraud that she really is. Alec, in this story, is actually a really tragic character. He's a teen who acts out because he's ignored by his parents. Mm. The main reason he's trying to bring down his sister is because she is always the one who gets the attention. The two of them inexplicably team up to torment their parents in the lead up to Hazel's birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's, Freddy. with Alec planning on double-crossing her the day of the party. When the day arrives, Alec's plan backfires. It's revealed that Hazel is truly just that pure and good of a person. It's been Alec who's been the jerk, pushing every everyone around him away, thinking himself as the victim when he was actually making himself into the victim. With the parents just trying to cater to his needs and Hazel just wanting a brother who liked her, Alec runs uh. off, ashamed of his actions, and hides in the storage closet. Just as he starts to make a promise to change for the better, he meets with a short little lonely Freddy, <laughs> free roaming hey, two-foot hey, doll man. made to entertain kids that are ignored or forgotten about the party. Having some but trouble those are lately. never quite what they seem in Freddy Fazbear's pizza. The cute little bear hypnotizes Alec and then body swaps with him, imprisoning Alec's consciousness inside the tiny bear body. Quote from that moment. You know, I've got one of those plush Freddies. His sister and his parents was Alec. It was the same rumpled t-shirt he'd thrown on that morning before the party. Yeah. The same ripped jeans. The same unruly golden curls. His light green eyes. Hey, Alex said, the voice in his head quiet at first, but quickly it was screaming. Hey, that's not me. That's not me. His eyes, his stolen green his eyes and his stolen so body. so fucking creepy. And then fake Alex smile. As Alec, trapped in the Lonely Freddy, was carried away by a store employee, he saw fake Alec wink at him from the table before returning his attention to a smiling, happy family. Dark, right? And oh Alec God. isn't alone. After he's puked on by one of the kids at the party, he's picked up and thrown into the dumpster, where he meets a couple new friends. One final quote. His fall was broken by dozens of plush bears that looked exactly like him. Dozens of discarded Lonely Freddies. Help! Alec thought he heard himself say. Pretty soon, it was every bear in the bin, their thin, muted screams for help swallowed by the metal and darkness that entombed them. Alec and his new friends, dozens of the Lonely Ones. Holy oh, what a great closing line for that story. It is so heartbreaking to see this misguided kid love his family only to have his chance at redemption ripped away by these animatronics. It is so, so sad as a story. But here's the thing. For as sad as it is, this story carries over yet another recurring theme that we're seeing develop in these books. That animatronics are stealing the identities of kids. In the first book, we have the story to be beautiful. Beautiful, hey. where baby steals the looks and identity of a girl named Eleanor. Here, we have ourselves another robot AI, this one housed inside the Lonely Freddy module, stealing the it's body crazy. of Alec. 
This, to me, is right in alignment with what we've Vanny. been expecting from Vanny in the new FNAF game that's slated for release I'm later so this year. That. Remember, in FNAF VR, we hear the story of Jeremy and how he cuts off his own face in an attempt Sorry. to reject the system taking control of his brain. And when we beat that game, it ends with Glitch Trap basically locking us away and taking over our body. We let him escape through us. But what we thought was happening on a small scale, one person getting taken over in one You're game, creating an army. Be happening to kids in pizzerias everywhere. It's further evidence supporting this theory that I did on hey. FNAF VR, where the story from this one. point forward is basically Afton creating <laughs> an army, a cult, a bunch of brainwashed, or more accurately, body swapped people hiding in public, hiding in so plain weird. sight, taking over bodies one by one. Kind of makes you wonder what FNAF 2020's got up its sleeve, right? Monty. Before we look forward, we actually have to look backward. You see, there's one last topic I'd like to explore with this final story story but it's a doozy it's the parallels that this story has with fnaf 4 in fact i believe that the lonely freddy story is helping us to solve Psychic what friend, is one of the bear. longest standing mysteries in this franchise but also one of the strangest inclusions Psychic friend, Fred bear never boys. really boys. had a solid answer for to boys. begin with and that, my friends, is Episode the true two. story of Psychic Friend Fred Bear. He's there, he's, he's here, he's there, there he's everywhere. Who are you gonna, gonna call? Psychic Friend, friend Fred, Fred Bear. Bear. But in order to tell Feels. you why, you're gonna need a bit more time. So until yeah, then, my friends, there's only one last thing to say. Do you want to save money on pizza? Yeah. No, no, I don't want to hear about honey. I totally called it, by the way. I just wanted to skip ahead to see if I was right. I was right, it's honey. Interesting. I, I noticed halfway through, I noticed, um why I do like these sort of this new series of FNAF game theories it's because not only is it still summarizing the books but it is still throwing in a little bit of lore and a little bit of speculation you might even say a little bit of theories in the video as well and I, and I like that I haven't finished reading this like I've said many times so I don't really know exactly what he's talking about but he did a good job of explaining everything and I think I'm going to enjoy when I finish this book, I think I'm really going to enjoy these stories. I will say, they are very dark. <laughs> they are very, very dark. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm still working on my summary slash review for Into the Pit, but um, those stories were dark, and it sounds like this book is full of even more dark stories, so if this goes through all the way up to book five, Bunny Call, this is going to be one crazy book series. <laughs> Because I don't think anyone expected it to be this dark, but here it is. This is what this is what Scott wants to show us, and it's here. So yeah, that is it for this reaction to Game Theory. Pretty solid, pretty solid. Um, I mean, it's not really much of a theory. It is still, like I said earlier, just explaining the book and then throwing some theories in there, connecting some pieces from the books to the games. I did like the little reminder at the beginning of the video to remind people that, hey, you know, the books, while they are still canon, they're also separate from the games. Some things may link together, but they are still a separate universe, but yes, they are still canon. That's gonna be it. Look forward to the summary for both Into the Pit and, let me grab it, and Fetch. Both of them coming out this month, hopefully very, very soon for the Into the Pit summary, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for the Fetch um, summary because, like I said, I'm not done reading it. Also, don't forget about the charity stream. April 7th, you can win a poster. Top donated. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.